Hello, everyone, and welcome. Many of you have been asking for this video, and the time has finally come. Today, I'll be testing a ton of PlayStation 2 games on my device using the latest version of NetherSX2, also known as NetherSX2 1.8. Before we begin, let me explain the setup I've used to record this content. I'm using the internal resolution set to 3x, which equals 1080p. I won't be changing this resolution, even if some games demand more hardware resources. I'm capturing the gameplay from my device using a capture card, ensuring the best possible quality. The device I'm using is a ROG Phone 6, equipped with 8GB of RAM, 256GB of internal storage, and a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor. For storing the games, I'm using a USB 3.2 flash drive, which offers a sequential read speed of 550 megabytes per second. I've chosen the most iconic games of this generation. Obviously, many games didn't make it onto this list, as the PlayStation 2 is one of the best-selling consoles and has one of the largest libraries of all time. Games from the GTA franchise won't be on this list since they were recently released natively in versions for Android, eliminating the need for emulation. All games are using widescreen hacks, and video capture will be done in 2448 by 1080 resolution. Even if some games have black bars, you can stretch them in the emulator to fill the entire screen if you prefer. To make the video more dynamic, I'll only comment on games that have issues or require different settings. The API selection is set to automatic. Before we begin, I ask everyone to leave a like. This type of video demands a lot of work. Around 300 gigabytes of PlayStation 2 games were downloaded and over 7 hours of video were captured using an external capture card, all to provide the best experience for you. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, as we have compatibility lists for various projects. We'll start our tests with Ace Combat 4, and we immediately encounter performance issues. The game may experience some slowdowns, but this can be resolved by adjusting the frame skip or slightly decreasing the resolution without compromising gameplay. This same performance issue repeats in Ace Combat 5, especially when looking directly at the ground, although it doesn't affect gameplay too much. Ace Combat Zero, released later than 5, has minor issues with graphical artifacts on the ground, but the gameplay is smooth without major performance problems. Area 51 received fixes in the latest version of NetherSX2, now, the shadows are rendered correctly. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, like other games developed by Snowblind Studio, are notoriously problematic for emulation, even on a real PlayStation 2 using OPL. Despite some minor moments of slowdown, the gameplay is still decent. Battlefield 2 Modern Combat presents GPU bottlenecks on my device. Since the goal of the video is not just to showcase the game's performance, I won't make resolution cuts or frame skip adjustments to ensure smoothness. However, I believe that with some tweaks, the game will become playable. Champions Return to Arms, a Diablo-style game, also developed by Snowblind, often has many issues on real PlayStation 2 hardware, such as textures appearing suddenly, disc reading problems, and freezes when opening character management. However, when played from a fast unit, as is normally done in emulation, the game runs smoothly without any issues.
most of you back there. Crash Tag Team Racing performs excellently during races, but in campaign mode, where you explore a semi-open world with Crash, it may experience some slowdown. In Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex, we encounter issues with fog. Although I'm not sure if it was a configuration error, probably yes, any type of fog in the game causes issues. It becomes playable when using software rendering mode. In the third driver game, there is still poor application optimization, resulting in the absence of sky and gameplay slowdowns. Driver Parallel Lines renders all effects and objects on the screen correctly but still suffers from poor performance. Unlike the first two games in the franchise, Fatal Frame 3 presents optimization and performance issues. I recently finished this game on PC Sex 2, and although less frequent, I also faced performance issues on the PC emulator.
Guitar Hero 2 will eventually encounter performance issues. In a rhythm game where every frame is important, this will make your gaming experience unplayable. Guitar Hero 3, at least in this initial phase, worked well. The echo present in the video is not noticeable in gameplay, in fact, it was my mistake during recording, where I accidentally recorded the audio twice. Jack 3 was one of the games that received fixes in this version 1.8, but it still remains quite buddy and slow to the point of being considered unplayable. Jack X Combat Racing is a Mario Kart-like option for PlayStation 2 but faces persistent issues with game saving. I recommend disabling autosave and using save states as a precaution. This issue is chronic and has persisted since the game's launch, affecting even original PlayStation 2 hardware. Additionally, the game still suffers from performance issues, likely due to poor optimization. Justice League Heroes is another game that uses the Snowblind engine. Despite issues with text blocks, the game runs very well and can be considered playable. Killzone, at least in arcade mode, is facing random crashes. The King of Fighters 98 has issues with distorted polygons and small textures when opting to use 3D stages.
Midnight Club 3 has issues with the HUD, where the minimap simply isn't rendered, even in software rendering mode. This makes gameplay impossible, as the minimap is essential for navigating the city during races. Mortal Kombat Armageddon faces minor optimization issues that can make fights a bit slow. It may be necessary to apply some kind of frame skip to resolve this. Mortal Kombat Deception also faces optimization issues, possibly requiring frame skip to maintain the game at 60 FPS. MotorStorm Arctic Edge, released late by Sony for PlayStation 2, harnesses the full potential of the console with incredible graphics. However, on Android, it's still not possible to fully enjoy this potential, requiring some kind of frame skip to maintain a decent frame rate consistently. <laughs> Need for Speed Most Wanted performs poorly and requires performance improvements from the application. I recommend not enabling the game's native widescreen to avoid visual issues. Need for Speed Pro Street and Need for Speed Undercover also face performance issues from the application. your shock blaster. Ridge Racer V has performance issues and may require frame skip to run properly, without graphical issues during gameplay.
Rumble Roses runs well, although it may experience polygon breakage issues during fights in the mud, a bug that also occurs on the original PlayStation 2 hardware. Shadow of the Colossus, when unlocking the FPS, demonstrates that the game runs at 50 FPS on my device, although it only requires 30 FPS for a smooth experience. What the heck is HQ doing? I repeat, hey Shadow, that's one of the Chaos Emeralds. Sly Cooper 2 and 3 face significant performance issues, making them virtually unplayable. The first game in the franchise was not tested during the tests, so I cannot confirm if it faces the same issue. Be a problem. Look, we're running 5x5 five five here. Make sure everyone's in sync. I hear that. <laughs> Soul Calibur 3 experiences GPU performance issues, requiring a reduction in resolution or the use of frame skip to maintain a constant frame rate. Splinter Cell Double Agent may experience slowdowns depending on the GPU load. It may be necessary to apply frame skip to maintain a consistent 30 FPS. Fair citizen, can you please take me to the Maison Derriere for uh... The Sims busting out faces slowdown issues due to per game optimization. Enabling frame skip may be necessary to maintain a good frame rate throughout gameplay. Taka Race Driver 3 also suffers from slowdown issues throughout gameplay due to poor application optimization.
have to stop him. That means I have to put him down. Fast. Killing me. It's killing me. <laughs> Urban Rain was one of the most problematic games tested, causing the device to freeze and restart. Even when started correctly, the game becomes slow and unplayable after a few moments of gameplay. Valkyrie Profile 2 Silmiria experiences slowdown issues in some city stages, becoming unplayable unless you can work around this problem. It was not possible to verify if the problem persists during combat, but the game remains quite problematic, even on PCSX2 for PC. Go! to taste my steel. Zenisega Episode 3 also Sprock Zarathustra experiences graphical issues in the HUD, but does not present any other major visual problems beyond that. And that concludes the video where we tested about 150 games. Thank you for watching, and until the next video.